To date, obviously, as you said, companies use classic Bluetooth or proprietary streaming standards. How widely, and I'd like to also say how quickly, do you think Bluetooth LE technology will be adopted by consumer tech companies or hearing aid companies for any of all of these uh, or all of these applications? Um, because I, for, for one, well, would like this now. <laughs> well, the basic use of Bluetooth adoption of the new standard will take place relatively quickly. Mobile phones are already starting to adopt it. You're starting to see earbuds come with it. So your next mobile phone and your next set of earbuds may very well be LE Audio. Now, deployment of AuraCast transmitters will take place more slowly. There's a bit of a chicken and egg situation here, but I don't think places like sports bars are going to deploy AuraCast until they know sufficient numbers of people have earbuds that can receive it. Right. But then I think you're going to start to see a competitive environment. In other words, if there are two sports bars in town, yeah. I adopt AuraCast before the other one. I can use that as a competitive advantage, provided there's enough people with earbuds that use it. And so AuraCast deployment will lag behind, but deployment of mobile phones and earbuds that can use the new Bluetooth will come fairly quickly. Fantastic. So from what you've told us so far, Bluetooth, LE Audio and AuraCast will change how people are going to experience the world around us. Can you tell us some more about this? Um, you know, the real impact it's going to have on the hearing impaired. Let me use my own example, because I watch television using a proprietary streaming device connected to the TV. So m most people use the streaming devices, even if their television has Bluetooth, because either their hearing aids won't receive classic Bluetooth, or if they do, like my Phonak models do, the latency is far too long. So I use a streaming device. Now, when AuraCast, uh, when my next television has AuraCast in it, I won't need the streaming device. I should be right. able to tune in directly. But the low latency is really meaningful because I can set my hearing aids to listen to half streaming audio and half real audio. So I can get the streamed audio into my hearing aids. I get good audibility, but I can still talk to the people around me. Mm. That's a key advantage to streaming Bluetooth to a hearing device. And the same is true for normal hearing people. If, if me and three of my friends and all three are normal hearing and we go to a sports bar, all four of us can tune into the match. All four of us can talk to each other. It's really a game changer. What do you think the impact will be of being able to stream content at the same time of being able to, as being able to hear the world around you? Well, the TV watching and sports bar examples, I think, are two good ones. But anywhere you're in public, you're going to want to hear the outside world, even when you're getting an audio stream. For example, if you're on a metro car, you still want to hear at a reduced level what's going on around you. You don't want to be sure. totally unaware of your surroundings. But at the same time, you want to hear as station stops. I think... We have to think about hearing a little bit differently today because for most of the existence of the hearing industry, it's all been about enabling people to understand live speech. But we don't spend our lives today just listening to live speech. We interact with streamed audio in lots of different ways. And as we've discussed, that will only increase. So to have a seamless mixed audio reality experience will be more and more valuable to people of all kinds and especially important to hearing impaired people so that they can understand both real audio and streamed audio with equal facility. Anybody who's done Zoom meetings for a full day knows how it can be very tiring. Part of that, what people call Zoom fatigue, is the fact that their cognitive load is higher because they can't understand the audio so well. You spend a day of meetings listening through tinny notebook computer speakers, you will be more fatigued by the end of the day. If you're a hearing impaired person, it's even worse. But if you're streaming that audio, it's a much less cognitive load experience, and therefore you don't get fatigued so quickly. You are more alert, you're more attentive. 
And because you may very well be doing hybrid meetings with people live and people remote, you have to have this mixed reality audio experience. I think it's so interesting. Actually, I believe Qualcomm's recent state of sound report said that people are using their TWS earbuds for 2.9 hours a day for video and voice calls. They're also using their TWS earbuds for 1.4 hours a day to hear in noise. So things are changing. These devices are no longer just for listening to music or um, consuming content. They actually are, have so much uh, more use to the end user and so many more applications that need to be considered when we're developing new technology, but um, we need to keep this in mind. Well, in the convergence of hearing and music listening earbuds will make that even more so. Use times will go up because more people will be using their earbuds as hearing devices, even if not full hearing aids or in the U.S. over-the-counter hearing aids, even mm -hmm. if they're using devices that reduce restaurant noise and they're using that device for noise cancellation on the metro or in an airplane, and now devices are starting to come with biometrics for health and well-being assessments. People are starting to use their voice assistant more. So for all of these use cases, the wear times are going to go up and up and up. And the technology is now supporting that because you can get longer battery lives and smaller form factors that are more comfortable. And so I think you've only just seen the beginning of where this is all going. So I truly believe that TWS earbuds will be at the heart of an ecosystem of products, the same way in which our mobile phones are at the heart of an ecosystem of products. And I can't wait to see what's going to happen in this space, really. I'm very excited. I think this fusion of music earbuds and hearing and the greater awareness it's creating is going to lead to meaningful lifestyle improvement and well-being improvement for many, many people. That's brilliant. So um, I want to go back to talking about Auracast. So what applications of Auracast are you personally excited about, Andrew? Well, you know, I, the one we've talked about it a couple of times, but definitely the sports bar. Definitely mm -hmm. the sports bar, because it's always the case where you go, you can watch the match and not hear it. Well, that really takes away part of the experience. And so that's the one I want to try the most. Uh, but of course, there are other useful ones as well. I, I do a fair amount of traveling. And so being able to walk across the terminal to the coffee shop and still get the gate announcements, that sort of thing <laughs> is really attractive as well. Fantastic. So uh, we've spoken about BLE Audio and the impact it'll have on the hearing aid industry. Are there any other emerging technologies you see having a significant impact on the hearing industry in the near future? I can see a couple. The first one, and one I'm really excited about, is the machine learning techniques for noise extraction. So when you, you think about a loud restaurant, and people have a hard time hearing because the noise is so loud. Mm -hmm. Well, that noise consists of other people's voices. And so you can't use classic noise cancellation there because if you cancel the noise, you're also going to reduce the voices you're trying to hear, which defeats the purpose. Now you can do some things. You can have directional microphones to pick up the voices of the people in front of you and reduce the noise everywhere else. But there are limits. Absolutely. Uh, the National Acoustic Labs tested AirPods Pro that has these features, and they got about 7 dB improvement in the speech to noise ratio, which is something. Uh, you know, it can be useful for a mildly hearing impaired person, but above mild to moderate hearing impairment is not enough. Now, you really need more reduction, but it's mm -hmm. hard to do that with acoustic techniques alone. So now the machine learning methods where you actually can separate out the speech from the noise, weigh the noise and enhance the speech, promises to improve that even much more. So anybody can use these to get improved understanding of the people around them when they're in a loud restaurant. So that's pretty exciting. And that's not even a hearing aid. Uh, the NAL, again, they, they did a study and they showed that just in the United States, so now project that onto the global population, just in the United States, there's approximately 25 million people oh. 
who complain of hearing difficulty but don't actually have hearing loss as measured by an audiogram. Wow, that's so a hearing aid people. won't even help them. Hmm. But for that group of people, many of whom say they have trouble in noisy situations but are okay and quiet, this sort of noise reduction device has a better chance of helping them than a hearing aid. And you can actually see this being more acceptable to the general public as well, because you think of it as an ANC mode, right? Yep. When I, well, let me, let me step back and say adaptive ANC is becoming, you know, quite the thing today and many more earbuds are adopting it, which means if I'm on the train, it'll reduce the train noise. If I go out onto the street, it'll let a little bit of outside sound in while keeping the noise level safe mm -hmm. so that I can be aware of my surroundings. Well, think then of just having another mode when I go into the restaurant, it, ki it kicks in the speech from noise extraction algorithm and I can hear everybody better in the restaurant, seamlessly moving from place to place with an ordinary earbud that does these things. So that's one of the things that I'm really excited about. That's really interesting, Andrew. I think the size of the problem is um, tremendous. You know, the number of people who struggle to hear in busy and noisy environments. We know that this is one of the first signs of hearing, hearing loss. Those people may, as you said, pass an audiogram and may not need hearing aids at this point in their hearing loss journey. And they need a solution, whether that's hearing enhancement features on a consumer device. Um, but traditional pro audio processing techniques like beamforming or AI noise reduction are limited. So an alternative is required. And that's the work that we do here at Audio Intelligence as well, where we're focusing on separating out the speech from the noise and delivering selected speech sources to the end user so that they can follow the conversation around the table. Are there, are there any other um, significant developments that you expect um, to see in the hearing industry um, with regards to new technology? Yes, another one, and I think it's a little bit further out, but still coming, especially as wear times go up, and that's advanced health monitoring techniques. The sensor technology is improving, and the processor power that can be put in an earbud is improving. So you can actually fuse the inputs of multiple sensors and start to derive real actionable insights into a person's health and well-being. I think mm -hmm. that's coming as well. Fantastic. So uh, the earbuds will really will be at the heart of an ecosystem of products and be involved with health monitoring all the way to um, delivering content to um, the end user. The hearing industry is going through one of the biggest transformations in its history with the advancements in technology and the creation of an OTC hearing aid category in the US. We are starting to see consumer tech companies enter the hearing space offering hearing enhancement features on their device devices and launching OTC hearing aids. Given your experience and exposure from working at Aura Futurity and your role as co-host on This Week in Hearing, what is your view on what's going to happen next in the hearing market? Well, we're reaching a point where we have a complete continuum of care throughout a person's hearing journey. If you look at today, only a small fraction of people with hearing loss are actually getting treatment. And there's a number of reasons for that, really beyond the scope of this discussion to break down. But what we have now, think about just earbuds with hearing enhancement, over-the-counter hearing aids, prescription hearing aids, cochlear implants, all across the hearing loss journey, there will be a device for you. And as consumer products companies move into this space, they come with completely different messaging. It's right. about lifestyle, it's about enjoyment, it's about being able to go out and have a good time. As people overall become more attuned to health and well-being and they seek different solutions at different stages of their life in order to maintain a healthy lifestyle, hearing just gets integrated into that. And the mm -hmm. consumer product companies, I mean, think about how consumer product companies sell their earbuds today. So to simply integrate hearing as part of another experience that we can make better for you with our earbuds, that positive message affects everybody. 
even if I am a severely hearing impaired person, beyond the capability of an over-the-counter hearing aid, I will be influenced by these positive lifestyle messages that the consumer products companies are bringing. And so I think all up and down the hearing loss spectrum, what's happening today is a good thing because more people will seek solutions in treatment for wherever they are. Mm. I couldn't agree more. It's such an exciting time. Thank you for your time today, Andrew. It's clear from our discussion that Bluetooth LE Audio will make a big step in addressing the limitations of previous versions of Bluetooth. This standard is expected to replace proprietary versions and spur innovation in hearing aid accessories. I think we know that from our own experiences. And it's set to deliver low latency, improved audio quality, and AuraCast broadcasting is going to change the way in which we experience the world. These features will have a significant impact on the hearing industry, making it easier for people with hearing loss to connect with the world around them and hear clearly. We're delighted to be able to talk to you today about this and share your experience about Bluetooth LE Audio with, the, um, with our viewers. It was a pleasure to be a part of it. And again, uh, thank you for inviting me to participate. Thanks, Andrew.